Yeah, thank you for coming back. You got uh, you got us in the Woodsman Perspective podcast, and uh, we're on we're we're live and in person tonight. Uh, we added video, and uh, we got a good guest on here with us too. We got Hunter Krim, and we're gonna talk turkeys and trapping. And uh, you know, one thing we were talking about is that <clears throat> I don't know when you're listening to this, but right now it's it's late January, and uh, duck and deer season still open here in, in Mississippi. Yeah, a little bit, but. Uh, you know, we're already looking forward, kind of looking at that, that management year sort of resets. It's getting time. Yeah. Yep. And Start so that, now. Yeah, that means uh, that means trapping turkeys. Trapping turkeys, getting all your deer stuff put up. Uh, I don't come in and put all mine in a, in a box, put it back in the, in the case for the year. I'm ready to move Chris, forward. Chris, you killing deer this year? I killed one deer. But I got some girls that killed some. I had I didn't kill a buck this year they, so far. Uh, now I still there's still yeah, a chance. But I killed, a, I killed one good deer and and uh, Kate killed her limit and, and uh, Avery <laughs> killed two. And, uh, right. So they they did they did pretty good. They done good. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. y'all may have saw Hunter. We've we've made some references to Hunter before, probably on some other podcasts. Hunter's a a, a heck of a woodsman, uh, and and he lives it. He really lives a great turkey hunter, and I think. I think there's a pretty good connection, and you'll pick up on this. There's a pretty good connection between his, his love for turkeys and his turkey hunting and the trapping we're going to talk about tonight. They, they are very connected, and uh, and we're glad to have him. We, we, I spent some time with him over the weekend. We uh, He showed me the process. We, we got a little, we got some content, some video around him boiling traps and prepping some some Duke, some Pro 550 traps some and some, some dog-proof and traps, and he's getting his arsenal ready, but we wanted to bring him on and uh, – Kind of give his history a little yeah, bit. Yeah, tell, tell me a little bit about you, Hunter. Well, I... Uh, How long have you been trapping? I've been trapping. We was looking at some pictures a while ago, me and Cole Krim, when he was about 14. So sometime when I was in high school, 16, 17 years old, I kind of got into it. Uh, and then as I got older, around 18, 19 years old, me and some of my buddies, we uh, we got into it pretty hard. And uh, we tried to outdo each other, and we set a bunch of traps, and... We learned a lot, and and we was making enough, just enough money, off of, off of what we called at the time to go on turkey hunting trips, uh, in March. So once we realized, we didn't really realize what we was doing at the time, but we was trapping hard to make money to go on turkey hunting trips, but in reality we was saving the turkeys more here. than we was doing here yeah. than yeah. we was anything else. <laughs> Well, to give him a little yeah, so. turkey hunting experience, Hunter, how many times, and I know you've been all over the country turkey hunting, how many Grand Slams have you done? Do you know? I've done several. I've only been twice to do it uh, in one year, but um, I've had – There's no telling how many. There's no telling how many. I mean, I've had I've had pretty good luck turkey hunting. Yeah, you've built, up a, pretty good, you've built up a pretty good network around the country. Yeah, that's of, right. I got, yeah. I got a lot of friends that we trade <laughs> – the deer hunt out for turkey hunt and we go there and turkey hunt and they come here and deer hunt and that's we started doing that 20 years ago uh yeah speaking of that we're we're in your <laughs> you're in your group. camp, camp yeah, house right. and shop right, right here that's where we're at recording tonight and it's, it's set up you, right. you've and got it usually, set up perfect right now it's, it's usually full of people coming in hunting you know that, right. that we go out and turkey hunting with actually we got a guy's gonna come stay Next Thursday that From we Kansas. we go to Kansas yeah. and yeah. hunt his place. He's got about eleven thousand acres in Kansas. So you would trade out. Yeah. They'll come down here we and get, a, out, get an yeah. Alabama deer hunt and a weekend of southern hospitality That's and right. come spring. He yeah. feeds them good too. I know I've been yeah. on a couple of those eating. My my father started doing that way back when, going on trips and he'd get there and meet somebody, and then he'd offer them to come here deer hunting and then just one thing led to now, another. Now Brian, if you don't know his daddy, but Johnny has always been a woodsman. I always been a big turkey hunter when kind of like when turkey hunting wasn't cool yeah and then johnny i mean he, when they named him hunter yeah and and you know <laughs> he's, he's only boy he's, he's only boy a lot, lot of people uh, turkey hunting. He's, he's, a, yeah, he's up in a pile he's of them he's been a pile of them yep um hunter on on trapping and you know what do you think you know we we different places have different types yeah. okay you got a lot of coons being more in the bottom it would be in the hills and vice versa but you know trapping and you've trapped everything beaver I've trapped everything cody all bobcat the from, all the way through all, all way kind through. of predators all kind of and, and nuisances and and you've been doing it you lease a lot of property i lease a lot of property and and 
trapping in general, we talking about a, I trapped a lot. Water trapping is kind of my, that's my favorite thing to do is water trap. But we don't have a lot of water around here, and you got to go to the river or somewhere else. And the beaver ponds that I was water trapping in, I now catch bass and stuff in them beaver ponds, so I don't really want to remove the the beavers. Me and you've been over there fishing yeah, one time, right. one, yeah. one of them beaver ponds, and, and <clears throat> so I kind of got. I don't want to beat them down, so I, I just I do more land sets now yeah. than anything. So. Well, you know, we talk about trapping, and then you know everything we talk about is generally about in, improving the habitat, improving that experience, increasing the value of, of, of that property investment, and so with trapping. With there not being the fur market, and, when, and a lot of times when you think about trapping, you think about a different generation. <clears throat> Old but school. For now, yeah. you know, right now, if we look at these times, and what other reason other than other than saving turkeys? Right. There, I mean, that, yeah. That's pretty. That's that's, that's the right. goal. There's, I mean, there's no, there there's trap, no that's, money in this in this hide right here. Yeah. You can take this hide, and you want you you got more in dollars. you got more in getting it tanned than you got yeah. for the hide. Yeah. So you go. Just like so that's the incentive. Like so, that's the motivation. That that's that's it, really. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's, it. it's something you do just for love for the land. turkeys. That's yeah. the, the improving the land and and uh and the turkeys. That's the number one. It's the number one deal for me. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that's that's something that across all demographics. So if a guy's got a thousand acres, two thousand acres, he's got to have. So that's got to be a piece that's of that right. management. But also, if you're leasing, Look, if, if you a can, small guy, if you can go. To the co-op and buy ten bags of rice bran and two bags of corn, corn. Or, or ten bags of corn and two bags of rice bran once a week. Put it out. You can go buy a few traps and catch your coons. Cause once deer season runs out, like now, you're tired of doing that. You realize you don't spend a bunch of money on it and you ain't fed nothing but coons. You can catch them right now. Right. Yeah, well, give <laughs> us a rundown. So yeah, starting tell right us, now. Tell walk, us how you walk would us set through one. your next your next so, few weeks or months and and, and so what's, what's got, it like for Hunter Creel? I've got several tracks of land that I'm going to trap for people that's coming out of deer season just for their turkey. So I've, I've hit mine a little bit here and there, but I'm going to kind of going to stop on my stuff and go to their stuff and catch their stuff. But what I tell people is to keep your feeders going, you know, when I come in their trap, or if you was pouring it out on the ground, just kind of just tell me where them spots is. And if you was going to do this for yourself, you can go in and set them places that's that you've been baiting all mm -hmm. year. I know you've got pictures of coons. You can catch them the first two or three nights right there. Pretty just, easy. Just boom, boom. And go ahead and knock them out. And then then that's when you move to setting, you, you know, your road ditches. And creeks and creeks stuff like that. And, That's when you, you got to get a little bit more creative. That's when you get you in. Got, but, you I mean, that's fun, too. A little more technical, you know? yeah. So I was going to say, that's, can, that's fun. And once it, you get into it, Everybody it's fun. can go catch them bait site coons. I mean, you know, you can set them easy. up. They're pretty easy. So you'll get them out of there. You start with that, and then... You'll be surprised how many coons there really is on a track of land. Um, you know, you, that's you what think I don't about think people the, understand. I don't think people really knows, and, and I don't think we can put it together a number. But you know, killing one coon, you know how many turkey nests that you say? A lot. No telling. And and what we don't think about on trapping for turkey, and and I look at my place the whole time is how we started trapping. Is you know, if we let them go. Then they're gonna they're gonna take they're gonna yeah. take over. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Well, you know what? It's so it's exponential because if that if that coon gets one nest, well, if that was if you look at statistically how many nests are gonna succeed, how many are gonna fail, if that's the one that was gonna succeed, and you know, right. I, you know I, I don't can, I, I don't want to get all mid level on on being technical, but that's you know right. there's compensatory mortality like some of them are that's not right. gonna make it, but if that's the one that was gonna make it, then. And, and let me tell you something. You, you think really about, set your turkeys you back. About that, that nest of, matters. You think about a flock of turkeys in, in Mississippi. Okay, we're, we're from Mississippi, so we're, in Al yeah. we're from Alabama. That's right. So a big flock of turkeys is 20 or 30, right? Well, These if one hen right. turkey has 12 to 13 to 15 eggs, could, okay? You don't need many to reset your whole place. That's right. It, you know, if you, if you can get two, you think about this. you got 25 or 30 hens. You got a couple gobblers. They're going to breed all those. If you can get two nests to make it, two nests. Yeah. So you got 23 nests that failed. You got two, but you, you got, got 30 You got two turkeys. that made us. You got 30 poles. That's right. Yeah, and if you if, if taking out coons saves one more nest, you've increased that 30%. No question. Well, look, so that's that, what I mean. It's, that's it's exponential. You, you've so, so, those little that, things matter so well, that's much. That's their grocery store. Every day, 
the coon's getting up to go eat something. And so at whatever time it is, they're eating your corn right now, but that's fixing to run out. And then once hen, when hens start nesting, they go around, they see an easy meal. I mean, that's just that's McDonald's for them. Even when we was at Mississippi State back in George Hurst was the biologist, turkey biologist. You know, a coon during nesting season, you know, bird nesting season, turkeys, quail, whatever that nest on the ground, woodcock, you know, name it. Coons, that was their diet. They went yep. to it because mm. they, they put transmitters on. So you know – they're going to them. Yep. Okay. Um, you and, know, and most most hens is going to nest right on the side of the road. They, you know, they're real easy. Most time, it's pretty easy for them, and and everything runs the roads. I mean, that's where I travel. Well, they nest side the road more sunlight, so well, it's still thicker. And, so, yeah, and look with, with with a lot of what the ground that we're hunting, a lot of this habitat has been. You know, you look at pine, pine planting, and pine. You got SMZs or roads, right. and yeah. that's where you've got that's a little right. bit of diversity, where you've got a little bit of nesting cover. And that, I know a, they're vulnerable right there. A right. lot of the statistics say that you've got to have habitat, but like we was talking about earlier, my habitat has never really changed around here. I mean, we've done we've done pretty much the same thing. In the last few years, we've been burning a little bit, but it's always been the same thing. So what was cutovers now, tall pines, and what was tall pines, tall pines, pines now, well, cutovers. It's a 30-year it rotation but plant plantation. We have basically. the same, and the only difference that I can see with the turkey population is when – being me and my buddies was trapping hard around here we was catching everything i mean just piling it up every day you know we had turkeys man we had turkeys just everywhere and then i got a little older and we kind of got out of it and we started having kids and i and didn't business. prioritize it like i should have right i started realizing my turkey population was going down i said you know something ain't right and you can vouch for this last year since i started trapping back a few years ago we had turkeys everywhere i mean sure we got is. Everybody that hunts on our place, they see turkeys when they're deer hunting. You know, they yeah. see. It don't you, take long. It and, don't and take if you long. think about it, two nests. That's, if I can get two nests to survive on my place, I've got turkeys forever. Trapping is the only common denominator on any ground that I've hunted yeah. that, so, that has turkeys. Yeah, and I wanted to make a, make a point is we talk a lot, and a lot of what you'll see around, you know, look, there's, there's a lot of talk, and rightly so, right now around turkey and turkey numbers a lot of efforts being put into restoring the wild turkey and that's great and a lot of what you hear is is it's a whole lot of habitat it's a whole lot of a lot of things and so a lot of us and i think a lot of listeners will, will relate to this a lot of us we don't have that kind of control over the ground we hunt so I can't go in and, and do a major manipulation on habitat and create nesting cover. I can't go out and take down hardwoods, closed canopy hardwoods or pines. That's right. I may not be able to burn on all of them. So I got two things that really I can impact my turkeys with. That's my trigger finger and trapping and the predators. No question. I, I, so yeah. two I predators, me yeah. well, I, and, and, the and, and the coons and, and the, the coyotes. And by, that's right. right. So, yeah. the, so predator control. Let's put yeah. ourselves in that predator I mean, that's, that, right. that's really what you can do. This year, I've, I've hunted this same piece of land for the whole time. And so, uh... You trying to hold his hand, Chris? Trying to hold my hand. I gotta <laughs> he, got a little, he got a little bump on him. He got a little tap. You get yeah. a little nervous when you stick his mic. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, But I've, I've hunted uh, this common ground, my, you know, pretty much the whole sure. lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I started saying, I want to hunt somewhere different. So I started asking people and finding land i got two different tracks of land that i leased this year that i've just owned for the first time i've never trapped never did nothing but lease it and mm -hmm. set it up for hunting and i've got more coons and stuff in them two tracks of land than i hear it's have here it's yeah. unbelievable he showed I mean, me a picture that had what 25 coons. yeah i mean just yeah. it's just ridiculous wow, and you'll have some coons on my corn pile here I mean, i've done about knocked them out like you seen another day when we yeah. went. but it won't be but one or two Maybe three. It ain't nothing ever or like that, you know, at them places that I've Yeah, that like I've you told me, year. you're kind of in maintenance mode on your place. I'm in maintenance mode. You knocked mode them back. You made that initial back, kill, yeah. and now you're. it's easier to make. So, it's like anything in life. It's easier to keep it than to try to fix it and start from right. scratch. Right. And yeah. I, I don't know how many tracks <laughs> that's like that that other people have that they have that many coons. I'm, they look, can't I'm have look, a good turkey baiting, population. Since baiting, since Let's just call it since feeding and baiting is, is legal. now, you know, it used to be kind of, you had to do it sneaky. You think about how many tracks of wood you walk, you'll, you'll see them old sneaky pieces of PVC pipe on a tree yeah. where people have to, used to have to be sneaky yeah. about baiting. Oh, camouflage right. ones. Yeah, that ain't anymore. No, and no. I think that's, I think you can really make a connection between that and, and some and, of these And I'm going to tell you predators. something, you can do 
just say you're hunting in a pine plantation. So they don't have the opportunity. They don't have any kind of fruit. They don't have any blackberries, dewberries to eat, okay? They don't have any acorns to eat. So they about, now they're, you know, a, a, a coon is an opportunist. Mm-hmm. He can live off anything. That's right. All right. But when you put that rice bran, that corn, that feed out, that protein pellets, mm-hmm. you go, you gonna suck them in. Well, look, it's not only and you it's can not get only in Mississippi and Alabama that the coons is causing a problem. We lease ground in, in Illinois, and there's a buddy that did some trapping in Illinois up there, and he caught like 140. Oh, I don't, how many I don't acres? know the I numbers exactly, but it was a 40 acre track, and he caught 140 coons on it. But he would talk about hearing. When he was smaller, hearing 15, 16 turkeys gobble on that 40-acre track, 40 acre track, and then it, it's like the coons come in and just took over. And he said that, you know, now you may hear one. He said he don't even hunt that piece of property because of the of the density of the turkeys. It's just yeah. one, maybe one gobbler on it, so he don't even he don't even hunt that property no more. But he caught 140 coons hmm. in like a 10-day period. That's wild. You know, and that's... You know, one thing that I never, and, and, and I say I'm a try to be a smart guy, read a lot and, and get around a pretty good read a lot. Pr- pretty good network. Yeah. But you know, you, you take um I didn't know it till Hunter showed me that coyotes were such a major problem with turkeys. Now, I know number one they're fawns, mm-hmm. rabbits, rats, you know, coyotes. That's right. But but turkeys and, and, and it's a pretty pretty funny thing, Brendan, you've heard the story, but me and Hunter was hunting opening day. And we was hunting on a piece of ground and, and uh, two turkeys were coming in. Well they were coming down and and they working pretty good and gobbling and so I shoot one of them. Pow! He does that to me a lot. Yeah, yeah he shot that right out of under. Look, <laughs> I'm, said, almost, I'm gonna carry you hunting. I'm gonna, we're gonna go hunting over here. I'm gonna get you a turkey. All right. Well, it, it come on my side. I didn't want to spook the other one. No, but all uh, sides, his, his side is ninety degrees. You well, got you, ten. You know how you, you, you know how you, you, how you had that one guy in little league that could throw from both sides. Yeah, that's the same way. Yeah, I, I, got a, I got a buddy like that. Yeah, I'm both the sides. reason I started shooting TSS and Apex was Chris. <laughs> we, we were sitting by a tree one day and we had two birds come up and we knew they were gonna hang up because we were in they some were wide weird. open woods and we couldn't get any closer. Mm-hmm. And when we sat down, we were. I don't know. We were a long way, 60, yeah. 75 yards yeah. from where I felt like they were going to stop, and they did it. They, 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 they did it exactly. The they come around the corner, stop, and we're looking at them, and boom! <laughs> and one of them just melted. Yeah. And uh, Chris said, I can't wait for you to shoot. I said, man, it, they was shooting far. hadn't crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I went and bought some Apex TSS right. that day. Yeah, they stopped. But this, this particular morning, you know, we never knew – there was a coyote in the world. So I shoot the turkey. He, so Hunter said, hold on, hold on, let me get the shot. He's finna shoot the other turkey. Also, another, we look to our left. The, that turkey kind of runs out and, there and stops. And, and, and starts kind of skirting us a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and, his and then she flies straight flopping. up in a tree. Remember yeah. that? And we're like, I said, hold on, Chris, hold on. And I was trying to get lined up on the other one to shoot it. It was coming around. Then all of a sudden, it just picked up and lit on lit on limb. We was like, what the heck's going on? We looked at his turkey, and there was a coyote over there standing at his turkey. Grabbed it. Grabbed Man. it. Man. So we blew him down. <laughs> Made a good picture. We got a he picture. Shot, he blew him down. So yeah. I, look, I got, <laughs> he got the turkey well, and the coyote. I ain't shot yet. Hunter's bad to oversleep. So I, I, I did two things for him. I got him up in the morning and let him witness a turkey eating. A, I mean, a coyote attack yeah. a dead yeah, turkey. That's, but that's they good did. of him. That's that was some but, good friend. So, strange stuff happened but, but that morning. But since then... You know, I started watching because I saw it firsthand. What they, what they, I mean, they, that coyote came to them yeah. goblin turkeys. I don't know how Look. far he came. Yeah. But he came to those turkeys. So we went to my place, do a little scouting, and went down there. And, and, you know, Brent, you've hunted down there. You don't hear a lot. I mean, you hear them every once in a while. They'll, you know, they'll scream over by the railroad track when a train comes through. But, and then, um, Hunter was walking with me and he looked, he kept looking and said, you got a bunch of coyotes. I said, no, ain't no way. That's exactly he said, what he said. You get, that's what, when you bring a trapper yeah. on said, your place, they, they notice things. I said, you I ain't got notice. that many. He said, they on every bridge you got. You they got them every down every road. every road. I said, you got coyotes all over I said, well, place. how many you think we got? He said, minimum you got 10. I said, there ain't no way I got 10. He said, we'll see. So in Mississippi, you know, you can trap from uh, November the 1st till March 15th, open day of turkey season. For, for coons, else, for fur bears. You know, trap year coons, round. skunks, that kind of but coyotes a nuisance animal, so yeah. you can hunt, you can trap them all year round. I don't know if anybody knows that. Coyotes animal, and hogs, you, that's yeah, right. You can get them. Yeah. So Hunter started putting stuff out, and, and Brent, we didn't hear in the goblin. The goblin would be very, one or two goblins, very minimal, nothing. And it was strange. We started setting them traps, and I this can't. This was in uh, 
in April. In Mar- yeah. March or April, yeah. March and April. You remember when we, we did? Got, we got a little video. You got a little video of it. So uh, we set those traps. Trey was there with us. Yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah. So we set those traps, and, and, and boom, 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 he caught five in every other day. Right out the gate. On the roads. On, on the roads. Road. And, and but we, we took we bush hogs. I bush hog, yeah. He told me to bush hog some lanes. So I bush hog, went down and bush hog some lanes. When that grass is there. coming up, they're going to run the path of least resistance. So he went in with Deer, bush hog. Every, it's funny how every, every, every living thing so will do that. we that's wind right. up catching seven. And the only reason we didn't catch ten because it flooded. It Remember flooded. That? It flooded real bad, and we just got everything out of there. And we went to New York. And so we went to New them. York. Yeah, but so. then when we got back from New York, they gobbled all day. Yeah, I mean they would they stand out there and gobble all day because I got video I on really, my phone of two of them gobbling. Yeah, I was, I'm sitting yeah. in the truck and they're out in the middle of the field gobbling like you in Texas. And, and the thing was, was there's no question in my mind those coyotes were hunting those turkeys. No question. Yeah. Now we're not talking about bobcats. Bobcats, we know they're tough. You know they're. I mean they're. Got they're a bunch of cats down there too. I got, I got a camera well, look, on one of your bridges right now, and I got we I got, got a picture of a big cat he, last night. He's already licking them old cream lips, yeah. ready to get them cats. Yeah. But I, I put a on. I put a camera on a bridge just because I wanted to catch wildlife using a bridge. That's that's. Yeah. But Hunter's cool. a cat is skunks. a bobcat easier to catch than a coyote? Absolutely. Really, you can get them. I wouldn't have thought that. I would have never cat, thought that either. A cat is almost. It's right up there with a raccoon. Is the easiest thing to catch. Really, a cat can't. They don't smell good. So they go by sight. So you can you can you set fool traps. Them a little. You can set traps that you just for a uh, cat. A cat that you can't catch a coyote in. But I, I mean, I, when I'm setting traps, most time I set my traps to catch anything. Okay. You know, because I'm in there predator removing I, whatever's in that trap. You're not specifically yeah. I'm not targeting. Specific, but if I yeah. if, if I do get specific on a cat, I can go in with some feathers or build a little cubby set or yeah hang a cd from a tree or something and you can about catch a cat if there's a cat in the area you can catch it that's hang a cd from a tree yeah i, I heard never heard that one then. just that I, flash you, you just like a, a house cat a like how they're curious look we took uh when we was figuring we're, gonna, we're gonna get a little bit of a lesson some technical yeah. information we out, of it this stuff over. out we would have a bag and we had christmas garland in it silver christmas garland we take that christmas garland hang it in a tree above a trap you know and and It'd have a cat in it nine times out of ten. I mean, it's a, wow. I mean, a cat's a cat, can, just like a cat. A cat's a you know, cat. They're just you can curious. Set, for, set for a cat, but uh, like a coyote, you got to have a trap out in the open. It needs to be able to circle that trap. You know, they're using that nose more, yeah, right? You don't really. You got to have a little bit of a backing, but you can't have a lot. You know, Hunter's you a big. He was a big be. Backstreet Boys fan, so he'd use that Backstreet Boy. Yeah, Justin CD. Timberlake, yeah. I, got, I got that walk. <laughs> he that walk. He'd, he'd take that one, he'd take it down every time he'd catch one. I'll tell you Justin. what's funny about Hunter. Hunter is probably one of the most competitive suckers I think I've ever oh, seen. Yeah, he I, does. I've played golf with him, or, or you follow him on Facebook, that sucker will be putting on hacky sack tournaments, or, or, or what is it, hey, uh, cornhole? Cornhole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, whatever he's doing, when I was out here videoing him, setting up those traps he's got such a routine and that i finally I had to slow him down i said honey look you got to slow down for me on video that may be he's why just got I, that he's, I, he's wired yeah. to do His things a certain way, way. And, that, yeah. and that i think you need some of that to be good at well, trapping and i paid attention to it when i was when i was starting a trap i mentioned talk, talking about trapping with my buddies we was competitive now we'd catch a, he'd catch a fox or i'd catch a fox and he'd want to catch another one and first one to coyote me it was we was so competitive on what we was doing, trying to catch things that we really focused on what we needed to do to catch something. Yeah. You know, we wasn't out there just. That competitiveness, it we drives you to be good. If you're going to excel at something, you, know, you got to have that edge. And right? maybe we have something, maybe we not. We we couldn't stand that phone call when somebody else caught something and you yeah. didn't, you know. <laughs> and so it was a. It was a competitive deal. It's made you good at it. I mean, yeah, it you say what you it. want to say about it. That's, that's how right. you get good at something. You and, care and enough I, to be competitive, and I, I want to be better than somebody else. I appreciate else. that battle. That we had because I well, learned he's competitive so much from it, against you know? that animal. That's right. That's right. You're trying to out trick that you're guy. You're trying to out trick the animal. You're trying to out catch your buddy. You know, and, and when you in when you 18, 19 years old, I mean, that's what every boy's doing, trying to outdo the other you're boy, competing. whether it's a truck you're competing, yeah. or whatever, you know. But we just happen to be in the woods trapping. So that's, I mean, that's. That I, carries I over like, into life, man. That's uh, just, that's yeah. just when you get up every day. Well, you're yeah. right. You nailed it with that. I mean, that's yeah. what you get up to do. Hunter, if, if for a guy that just don't know, He's sitting here watching this, listening to this podcast. You know, I got 150 acres of land, and I know different places are different, but you, you're you smart enough to go on that track and walk it, look at it, just like I would cruising the timber. Yeah. 
you'd, you'd look at the signs, you'd look at creeks, you'd say, okay. You'd look at these bait stations, you'd say, so when you go in and I say, all right, Hunter, I want to hire you to, uh, I want you to wipe this thing out, coons, coyotes. How long does that usually take on 150 acres? Because you'll set more traps if you see a lot more yeah, animals. Well, on 150 acres, you're not really – you catch what's there, but every, all this animals roam they move. so much. Just like deer, they roam it back and forth. So you need as big of an area. If you got 150 acres, yeah, trap that 150 acres, but try to get your neighbors to join in too. You know, Tell them, hey, I'm, I'm going to hire a trapper and we're fishing to come in because you're trying to knock a big, a big a hole as you can in that – in that land right there for yeah. your turkeys so and it, fawns too and hey. fawns too but you, yeah this yeah. is a two time a year deal when yeah. you start when you when you start trapping you can't quit you can't say well they come in here and caught a few last year you, you got to do it right before the the hen nesting season and you got to oh, do it right i was gonna say timing's right, important too. right before <clears throat> phone drop because if you do wait to phone drop it's almost too late well you know you got a dr reed got me on Coons and and Doctor Reed's not a real big turkey hunter, but he's a conservationist steward. He, he is yep. a steward of his land and he manages his land and and you know he's a doctor, so he's all about right now. So I come in one day and he had a board set up on his shed, and it had coons, possums, skunks. Had a had a little number. Had, had mm-hmm. the, yeah, had the hatch yeah, marks. Had the hatch marks on it. <laughs> so I've got to looking at him and and uh, you know he's used to all them years of writing. So them, dang, the coons are winning, reports. Doc. You know, I said, I said, Doc, what is what is this? What is? I mean, he said, he said. He said, I take these coons, I take over 100 out a year. And he said, you need to do the same thing. <laughs> I said, you got that right. So he, he's a box trap man. Yep. He likes a little live trap. Uh-huh. And uh, so I do different methods of mine because I don't have the, the, the time and running them hard. But uh, I kill 100, 150. He kills 100, 150. Yeah, it makes a difference. So, it makes a difference. you know, we got two, and I explain my girls. I tell them all the time, you know, Daddy, why, you know, those things are cute. Why do you? I said, well, baby, you know, a coon may be look cute. Number one, grab him behind the neck of the neck and see, nap of the neck, see what he'll do cute, to you. Yeah, yeah he ain't well, cute then. But number two, I said, here's how I explained it to him. Because, you know, I mean, everybody, just, they're cuddly. They look yeah. pretty. They put them on birthday cards, okay? Coon, two coons yeah. sitting there grinning. Trash pandas. But, but let me tell you something. They'll jump on a turkey hen and bite her neck and kill her and eat every one of her eggs every up. Every one of her eggs. Yep. And they'll do it not just once, every time they find one. Well, okay. people surprised how I mean, many on, on, on their land. When you, when I, that's the number one thing. When I go trap a place, people's like, "Well, I got a couple, just like you was talking about with your coyotes." Yeah, you didn't think you had that many because you don't see them all. You don't all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's just like running these cameras. You got some coons that come in there and eat, you know, and you thinking that, well, I got a few coons, I ain't got a lot. I go set traps all through your place for ten days, and I'm catching ten to fifteen animals a night, and I pile them up in a pile, like this is what. You know, this, this is the, this is the predators that you it, had. It makes sense. Eating turkeys. It makes you know, sense. So. Where'd my turkeys go? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So That's listen, right. do you see a? Uh, you, you made a comment about knocking out those coyotes on Chris's place, and then you see a quicker response. You see immediate response in those turkeys because those really adult did. turkeys yeah. lost that predator. Well, they're looking for them too. So well, they're yeah, not scared right. them so every day. On you know, the, they're getting out in them fields and they. They're with not the seeing yeah, them. with the nest predators, it's a little longer chest match before you. That's not an immediate. That's, right. that's, Look, that's not an immediate response you're going to this gonna podcast see. right now, and probably more than none has been calling on a turkey call and either had a bobcat slip up on them or yeah. a coyote. Or coyote. Yep. You know, and they yeah. they blew it down or whatever. You remember? You remember our buddy David Bartimus had one slip up and smack him in the head, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Reached around the tree people. on him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you so, know, that's something that's. Especially these decoys. I mean, they're always hunting. Hey, look, they're always hunting. Decoys. That morning didn't make that bobcat want to come up do you and eat. He's done that. He done had a taste right. of the turkey, and he's coming back for more. You know, you know, so. you know we talk about time. They don't have nothing but time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you think about it, if you're a turkey hunter and you're, you know, you're turkey hunting a place all your life, most of the time your turkeys are going to roost in the same place. Wouldn't yeah, you agree? That's right. Yeah, they use day the property in, day out. the same. I yep. mean, that's the thing. That's that's one thing really cool about a turkey. Well, she you, passes. She passes you that down. That that generation. Generation. Like you figure he's going to be right, right. in there. He's somewhere. in that way. So yeah. if I'm a coon, I mean, if I'm a coyote, okay, and I go and hear that turkey gobbling all morning, if I'm six foot and 215 pounds, which I'm, that's yeah, what that's, I do. We'll that's that's you that's good, good enough. Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and still lean. But, good uh, enough. But it. If I can sneak up on that turkey and get within 60 yards of him, you know that coyote can get. And if he don't oh, get him that does. morning, if he yeah, don't get him he that morning, every day. he'll yeah. be sitting there the next morning 
a little closer. That's right. And then all it takes is a Jake turkey or something to fly down. That gobbler takes his takes his guard down. He's eight. Yeah. He yep. gets him that quick. Yeah, coyote's got to win one time. That turkey's got to win I every shot time. That coo- I shot that turkey that we was talking about in that story with that gun. Boom. He dropped down. You, we're talking seconds. We're talking 30, yeah. 40, 50 seconds, Brent. Like, I mean, the other turkey ain't He's even He's swinging. Off you know, Hunter's getting on him. All of a sudden, that turkey pitches to go straight up in the air. We're looking. All of a sudden, there's a coyote. Yeah, that coyote there. was already there. He, he was, was already, already there. there. That's right. He, he, was, heard, he done shot a gun now. But he boom, heard the shot. You know, in that bottom. But so. he saw that turkey flopping, yep. and he was there on it. So you think about seconds. So if you, if you are a turkey hunter, and you get three or four gobblers together, you know, they're strutting, they're – they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're doing calling their thing. Every, they're calling, calling every predator. They're, they're, your neighbor, every coyotes, one of them. That's right. I, got, I got pictures it's, this it's year, a, and I posted it on that, my that's Facebook. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I had a group of hens coming through a field, and it wasn't nothing but a clover field. It wasn't a, a bait side or nothing. It was just a camera looking at a clover field. So these turkeys would come through, and they'd come back through. Well, there directly, I had a coyote coming through with one of them turkeys in his mouth. Done caught uh, it. Done caught one of them hen turkeys and was running. Well, now you do some it. shooting too, didn't you? Am I? Didn't y'all don't y'all go out with thermal sometimes and shoot? Yeah, didn't y'all, didn't y'all that. shoot yeah. one that had a, a had a poke I got in a, its mouth? My buzzy, my buzzy. Did I imagine mm-hmm. that or was that was that y'all? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I got actually got two friends that that do it. They and, shot them. Uh, we shot one in a cutover and it was howling. Uh, <clears throat> this was in I don't know. It was in the summer, so it was probably June maybe Juneish. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he shot that coyote and went over and picked it up when I picked it up the. The poke was coming out of his mouth, and it was a, a turkey, little hen. a little hen. Crazy. I mean, a little, well, it was just a little a little, yeah. little baby you know, poke. So he then snatched her up, run the other ones off, and, and yeah. you know, there again. Now, check that out. And she that's made probably it. a whole she brood. Made it. She, made it. A whole brood. she made it. That's that's right. Right. She made it through the coon, and that's she right. got smoked by the, yep. Yep. by the coyote. And so we're, we're looking, but if you take both of them elements out, she could make it. Yeah. So run me through. So so you start. Do you have a? Is it is it when you go into trapping? So like you you you're trapping professionally for for some yeah. landowners. Are you going in for everything, or do you go early first for raccoons and nest predators, and you get into no, coyotes I'm, and cats later? How did do you have? I'm a, going in. For tell everything. me about it. So when I when I get there, most time what I do to start with is I get all my coyote and my bobcat traps out. Because that kind of takes them, you know, most time. But I'm looking as I'm doing that, where I can catch a coon right there, you know, and I'll yeah. come back to. So it. you prioritize maybe the, I prioritize and, and along the way my, you find places to put the my, coon sets. My cold spring traps in the ground for the coyote and the in the coon. That's a little more work. You know? and that's a little more work. Takes more time. And so the first day I get there, I'm fishing to set as many of them as I can throughout your, you know, landscape. And I've done most of these people that I'm trapping on. I've done done. Aerial photo. Now you can get on land glide or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and pull that track Study of land it pretty up. Pretty good. And I done. I figured out where the roads coming intersections in, and and stuff. intersections, yeah. and where the creeks run, and all. So I've done got already in my head, kind of before I even get on your piece piece of property, what I'm going to do. Land kind of like that football game. But, got them first twenty plays scripted. Right. You, but you remember what we say, Brent? I got a play sheet. Landowners, walk your land. Yeah. Know that when you get a guy like Hunter coming in there. Hunter, let me tell you, no there's an intersection put right here. The, num- the number you one know. thing that I, that I run into when I'm trapping people's land is people riding because I'm setting my traps on, on this piece of property. Pressure. Well, in the roads where the tire tracks are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's where you see the tracks. So I'm setting intersections and... Middle of the road. Yeah, and you'll have somebody ride through there, you know, and run over two or three traps. And, well, just it, that scent. It's, it's, yeah, it's just better to... Leave Get, it alone. It's better to leave it alone. So when I come in, I ask them, like, y'all don't be joyriding or whatever, if you don't mind while I'm in here, because I'm going to have sets in these tire tracks. Yeah. And you think about not, people you know, spending a little money. They're curious. They, uh, they, they want to see, see that. Yeah. They want to see right. that. Yeah. You know, they want to yeah. see that joker hung up in so that in trap. So in Mississippi, you can, you can live trap. Alabama, you can't. But I've had people shoot. You know, coyotes and stuff for me. Like, hey, you had a trap, you had a coyote in that trap down there. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. You just shot $60 that I could have put somewhere, but you know, you just don't. Or, just like we alone. set the two traps. Remember, we caught one yeah, that boom, morning boom. because I had a camera, caught one that evening. Yep. That's right. We caught them both right there. Right there. And, and you know, and if I would have went down there and messed it up, we would have never caught the other one. And you don't, you, I'm not making no money on the fur no more. Um, and I think that's got to deal with the population of coons now. 
because when I was younger, I couldn't even bring twenty five dollars. You know, you, I couldn't imagine going to catch a hundred coons on, you know, in two or three weeks and they being twenty five dollars a piece. That's that's good money. Yeah. But now they like a, a dollar or two dollars. You know, they ain't, you ain't wow. you ain't getting getting the, you ain't getting your return from the from the pelts. But more people was trapping. Everybody was trapping, getting that twenty five dollars. Yeah. And that's you had a good turkey population. I hadn't had time to research it, but I had somebody I was talking today about trapping, and somebody said they read somewhere that that fur was sort of coming back. Well, you, you seen anything? I've not really. I know that it, they said that beaver was up this year. They may just lie to me. It might sound good, but like Napa up in in Canada, up there where everybody we used to sell our furs to, they done closed down. They're not even a thing. I know a guy that that's got a bunch of cats up there that he sent up there a few years ago to sell. Yeah. They didn't sell, and he don't know where they're at. So he trapped all year. I think he said he had like 60 mm. cats. So he had 60 cats that he got ready to sell, sent to the fur market to sell, and he don't know where they're at. He didn't get no check for them. He ain't got them back. Wow. You know, That's so that, that was just lost mm. deal, yeah. you know. And well, it, it's a it's a love for it. But, you know, as long as I got Hunter on my team i mean he's got one trap but i want to trap myself yeah and, and it's fun it, well i tell you what now well, well a lot of times first, hunter's busy yeah i could run down there because That's you right. think about it i'm my Once place is set. 45 miles from his house yeah he checks these things at daylight because he's got a full-time job yeah i mean he's sitting there well when I, the that's why when i'm trapping I, I that's what i'm charging for to take off so i can do the do it right you know i I don't want to come in but it's be a worried commitment. about getting yeah. to somewhere I was going to say, that's, that's – I mean, commitment. you start talking you gotta, about 75 traps. Yeah. And, look, I, he, he set 10 on my place, and it took us half a day. I mean, because really we were digging that. My mother's yeah. a little different than had, roasted folks. The first but. day I had to go get some dirt. <laughs> he brought a bucket out of Alabama, Alabama dirt. dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Over that second day. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can still gumbo, say it. I put a little roll tie thing on it. Alabama 8. And, look, we're not trying to discourage people talking about how hard it is, but we want to be realistic about it. It is It is going to take your time, but you should do it. You yeah. should put your time well, in it. You should make it a priority, and you should invest that time yeah. in doing you it. You will see a return no in it, whether you hire somebody or do it yourself. Yeah, or, I was going to say, or get with your neighbors – Y'all get together and hire somebody and bring them in the trap. Well, I'll tell you this. It'll pay off. We've, yeah, never, is... we've never trapped on the, the farm up at Hamilton. You're familiar with mm-hmm. it. Um, when I was around that farm in the late 90s, there'd be flocks of 40, 50 turkeys on it. What do we kill? Maybe one a year? Yeah. And the biggest flock I've seen is five, six, seven. Yeah, lately. Lately. Well, I can tell so, you. So I'm telling you, now, and I think some eagles are – causing some issues yeah. on some of them well, too eagles now. and hawks and, and um, owls that's something we ain't talking about that's right that's, that's but they're, they're pretty tough and you can't well. manage them yeah Mm-mm. they manage you yeah but um and i didn't know that they were such a big yeah eagles they're probably yeah. eagles pretty tough now i mean he's he, he can grab one up and walk away with it i mean he's, he's I, tough I know guy. more people's getting on board with it because i put a facebook post on there said i was looking for a few places to pick up the trap this year and I, they blew was, you up and i got all i want so yeah. i mean i've got I've got all the land now that I can trap between now and turkey and, season. I yeah. mean, I, I'm full. So there needs to be other people that knows what's going on. You know, you got well, if you got a place and you like it, and it would be a great thing. My girls would love it. Yep, you we know, did it with, with my friend, daughter and your. And, 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 that's right. When they, were little, when they were they were real yeah. little. And Wayne said, said them. Wayne said, that, "Remember, we got the coyote down them. there by the mm, by the, by the track. Yeah. Yeah, we still got pictures of them. Yep. They were little bitty things. You know, it's it's they some boys that I took last year. Some of foster boys up here at Millport. They, they come went last year and their daddy's you know traps a little bit right. and man they're eat up with it. they love it and then there's that well, other, and there's not much else girl. to do this time of year either no, if you like I mean, us you know and you really want to get out there does them skull mounts for you, you know, yeah he's, he's, he's a good 14, little trapper he's a good little trapper he sets traps like crazy I mean he he sends me pictures of setting traps I just you know you, you you make that list we talked about that list all right what am I gonna do to make my place better now if you ain't got any turkeys look for deer okay. Um, because let me tell you something. I don't care who says it, but if you're feeding deer, a coon getting in there and yep. peeing and crapping in the deer feed can't be good for the deer. Yeah. Okay, you need to take them out. You I mean, don't out. you agree? I mean, what, yeah, I mean, they just... Look, with habitat, you say that if you don't have turkeys, but with timber and oh, habitat yeah. changing like it does, you that's may like end up place. with turkeys. You can hey, have turkeys, right. and, and you and need it, to be managing for Because, them. Brent, some of them, one of them tracks you just listed, 
got neighborhoods all the way around it, and you had to pitch your four gobblers. Six long I, beers. I mean, on, yeah. look, you got a guy shooting hoops and, and riding. So what are you, hold on, let's cut the. What are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we I mean, talk. Yeah, we got I talk. mean, we're yeah. talking about a, a quarter yeah. mile from a guy riding a huffy bicycle and shooting yeah. a basketball. Neighborhood, yeah. Yeah, neighborhood. Six and, long beers. Look, six long two, two, two big mature bucks, six long beer turkeys, turkeys, and it's yeah. a, it's because it's an ideal. It's got we'll, the habitat. We'll move on, but it's got to have it. It's got yeah, diversity. Perfect. It's got yeah. everything on that, that 60 That acres. a turkey yeah. needs. Yep. But guess what? What if you – you know it ain't been trapped. Yep. I mean, it's just a – little bit of effort, a little bit of There's no effort. question, and, and, and I, I owe all my taking my coons out to Dr. Reed and, and taking them. The coyotes going to be to Hunter. Hunter's one told me about the coyotes mm-hmm. and taking them out. And um, well, but it, I, It's the only common denominator on, on – Real life scenarios that I've lived, I've seen it. Everybody around me sees it. They know when I was trapping, when I wasn't trapping. I mean, it's they can say all this and this. It one way's better than another, and you need to do this and this and this. You need to do everything. You don't need to just yeah go out and trap. But I love them. Just quit. You know. You but. know how people you get a bad eye. People don't want to see animals hurting and bleeding and shot and yeah, trapped. I mean, we and, don't either. No. So don't 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 go out there and put it on Facebook or Instagram. But you know. That you blowing him down. I mean, don't That's be right, a yeah. don't, don't be a goofball. You know, well, I mean, you don't need to terminate. We ain't trying to terminate everything either. I mean, you got to be stewards of the land. You you got people but running these, these. This guy right here, not only is he getting digging in your garbage can, but he's killing every bird species out there. He can kill. That's right. Every one of them, bar none. And and nowadays there's a problem because there's they're overpopulated. Yep. They are overpopulated yep. in areas where they once wasn't overpopulated, and somebody's got to do something about it. If you let them just keep on making babies, yeah, keep you know. Well, if, your, your other option is if you don't do it, you, you thing, pray one of them gets a disease and they all get wiped out. Well, the only predator I know that a predator has is disease. Yeah, I Stimper. mean I don't uh, yeah, a coyote. I don't know a coyote. You throw out some coons that you say you ain't gonna do nothing with. They'll lay there. Don't nothing hardly eat them. I mean they just really. Yeah, and, and coyotes and stuff that I that I threw in the ditch that had mange or something or another, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, that I threw out somewhere. You ride by them and want nothing to be eating them. Hmm. The only thing that eats them is buzzard. a buzzard. Yeah. They ain't no buzzard's going to eat anything. But they don't – you throw out a deer carcass, and the next day that deer carcass is eat, gone. Like eating it. Gone. Yeah. You throw out predators and nothing touches right. them. You know, so, I, don't, I don't know that um, – the end game is if you don't do it, they're going to eat you up. They're going to eat you up. No question. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking, but look, we can go to wood ducks, wood duck boxes. Now, I mean, a coon is a sharp cat. He'll climb up a tree, reach in there and grab an egg out, See, smash suckers it. suckers are ninjas, yeah. man. They're I got ninjas. them hanging on my feeder. So well, <laughs> so what I've done, I closed my gate down the farm. And when I did, there was a juvenile, had to been a juvenile hen. She had a little nest there. She flew up. So I said, darn. And, and she didn't had. She didn't say it. She yep. was late. She was a little bit late. Not in the best place. The next day, I was probably fired up about her. The next day, I had to go down there. We were we were trying to burn, mm-hmm. and I and I real been real easy getting out. You know, I mean, I mean, she's at my gate, so yeah, I had to open the gate right up. By it. Yeah. I so remember. I peeked over and I looked. And I could see the eggs. Yeah. Got her well, that you night. You called me. I called you. you I called said, me I said, morning. Hunter, ain't no way I I can save her. And he said, Mm-mm. said they'll get her tonight. And um, next they morning. got her that night. I said, you know what? I, I think I out. called you. I said, "What about you? What about you, Turkey?" He said, "He's gone. <laughs> he yeah. gone. Got you know, him all. Yeah. Time so, to trap." So yep. let me tell you, and it was out, and I, and I put a trap that right there, and that sucker was in it, and I, and that was that was, it was fulfillment because he just ate twelve eggs and smashed them. <laughs> That's right. And then I got him next day because he mm. come back licking them coon lips. You know, he wanting another little, <laughs> he want another little omelet, easy meal, little, little little easy side omelet. Yeah. But um, but he got them. Well, I mean, he got them at skunk, night. Coons, possums. I mean, it's just. Well, got, skunks you, are tricky. You, you Tell me about a skunk. Them. That's a tricky machine. It's tricky. I, I had they gonna spray exactly, every time, ain't they? Exactly they gonna spray. Do it, but you can you can get back from a, from a skunk and shoot it behind the shoulder from a distance. Sometimes they won't spray, but well, I mean it's hard. I, people, you can read tricks, and I've YouTube tricks on shooting. They gonna spray on shooting skunks. They gonna spray, and they that's just bottom line. They gonna spray most time. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Well, I shot one out. day before yesterday. Saw him out there, and I said, I'm going to get ahead of the game. And I aimed right at his head. I said, I'll just knock yeah. his lid out. I snuck up. I sp- shot him. Didn't spray. I was high-fiving. 
Bucket 30 time. minutes later, come back, and you can smell it all the way to half a mile again. I said, yeah, it got me. That's yeah, right. I was walking out from that gas line or the airhead stand. You smell and it? And there was one right there, and, and that sucker didn't want to let me go well, by. Well, I love to know I got one, but I caught some down there at Chris's last year, and I, had, I left my trap all year. I just pulled it. <laughs> you know, I just shot the skunk in it, left it there. <laughs> he took it. He get on mean, it. You can't. And, if, and, and really, you think about it, he got caught in one of the darn – you Coyote traps. But they're you nest can, predators. No, they'll they'll, they'll was, wipe them out. Just I was like boiling raccoon. some traps, and some of them traps that I caught skunk in that sprayed, when you put it in that water, the water smelled like you could smell that come off of it. And like, that was, yeah. It's an oil. I mean, that was six, seven, eight months ago. You know, That's wild. So, I don't know. Um, but there is a difference. I, I'm going to tell you, Hunter, you make, you're make you making a difference on your own place because I know how many turkeys y'all kill that's as right. a club. I mean, one thing, one th- thing they do, Brent. They got a club that's turkey hunters. I mean, we'll come over here for the turkey breakfast, and it'll be ten or fifteen hunters in here that's eating breakfast. Eating breakfast, finna go somewhere, you know. Somewhere, you know and and yeah. me and Brent, you know, we we kind of lone wolves. Me and Brent over here <laughs> yeah. by ourselves and kind of. We got to get in the club. Yeah, look it over the eyeballs. You yeah. know. But um, so you got so, you've gotten involved. You got that TFT shirt on. You've gotten involved with a local chapter, hadn't you? Yeah. Well, we was going to start a TFT chapter last year, uh, but. There was still a few more things they needed to work out to, yeah. to get it to where we could do it. We well, we had all the underlining stuff figured out. It's just they wasn't where they. I felt like they needed to be for. I us think all I of them you. together. I think National Wild Turkey Federation TFT. Yeah. Uh, you know, gamekeepers. I think everybody wants the turkeys to succeed. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yep. Wouldn't you agree with that? I do. I, I mean, do a it's thing just, with, just the, with the everybody. Alabama State Game Wardens that I'm doing this year uh, at Cahaba National Forest, other us out of Birmingham, and we do it's called a, a Turkey Day. So really, it's a turkey school. People sign up for it, and we instruct you know on turkey calls this and that and other. But one of the things I do is trapping, trap and that, show them stuff, show them you know how to set them, how to set them, and and. It, the importance of it, you know, on their on their land, and so it ain't a it ain't a trapping day, but I kind of do that a little bit. But then we go through scenarios of what what a turkey does and how it's gonna come in and what calls you need. Just calling and, H- and Hunter, if for that's the, pretty cool idea for the guy yeah, that it's don't. A, it's a good school for the I guy don't have any traps like myself. How, how many? How many? How, how you get into it? Well, how, no, set tell up. me this: How many would you go get? How many dog proof? You know, y'all hear the, the, the big popular the things, DBs, dog proof. Yeah. I would go get a dozen. You can go you twelve can, traps. You can go twelve. They're, in the trapping world, everything's by the dozen. Okay. So it ain't two or three here. It's it's dozen, dozen of these, dozen of them. So if you just wanted to go get some traps on your own to get started, I would get a dozen five fifty Duke five fifties. They're ready out the gate. All you gotta do is boil them, put your anchor system on them, okay. and set them. Uh, get then get you a dozen Duke DPs for coons, you know, and coons and possums. And you can get a you can get a box of each. Well, I went I went I done bought about seven or eight dozen in the last week or two. Right down at Duke. So <laughs> yeah, I told I, you he's competitive. Oh yeah, I, I've, I've got a lot. <laughs> yeah. So but I can go in there and a a box of DP coon traps, twelve mm-hmm. DP coon traps, and twelve MB five fifties is three hundred dollars. You can if you take cash to Duke's, they'll give you a discount. You know, so be prepared when you go down there to get them. Just make sure you got some cash in your pocket. But I, I go there instead of ordering it because it's just in West Point. You walk in there, you can look you at them. it hands on. You can tell Junior what you're looking for. They're nice, you know, and it's. But it, that's a three hundred dollar bill. That them, them traps. So that's kind of gives you an idea on what cost. What well, cost wise. If you love it, a wild turkey, that's well west. That's well, three hundred dollars well much, spent. Well, how, how much, much do we spend you on greenfields? And well, corn, yeah, and corn. I mean, and batteries for your cell camera. Yeah, but all right, all right. Well, let's back up. How much would you pay to in, go kill a in mid-April? Yeah. How, how many times you been standing in no turkeys got them? You'd, you'd pay three hundred dollars like that, like that, to be able to one. hear a turkey or two. Yeah, to, so kill that's, one. to or me, drive, that's, to me, it's absolutely yeah. drive across the country up there and spend yeah. fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. A non-resident to license, kill, a little you know, gas. That three hundred dollars on traps. That's right. That, yes. That's that's money well spent. And so that'll get you that'll get you started. But when you get into the game of trapping two or three thousand acres at a time, you got to have enough traps to cover it. I mean, and that's it's money. The, you order all them traps, and then you got to have your baits and your scents, and you you know you just you, you got to get it all together. And you can go to Duke's over there, walk in there for three hundred dollars, you can have your traps, and another fifty dollars, you can have all the bait and stuff you need, and you can go put them in the ground. And if two or three of you's doing it. 
or you in a hunt club, two or three of you in a hunt club, just pitch in a little bit and go yep. get them and do it together. You know, when it's you getting out of the house and trapping when you ain't setting a bunch like I'm doing, you can really enjoy it because you can do it Sunday morning before church, you know, or Sunday afternoon you can go set some and then you can get up 4 o'clock, get up an hour earlier in the morning and run and check them traps right quick before you go to work. Yeah. You know, and then – And so, like, all right, so – we got that luxury. Well, us around here where we, we work and live right here close to where we hunt. If you don't, if you're in a camp, you may be an hour from the camp. I know some people, yep. when they right. drive into camp, one of their first things, that camp weekend or when you go, they'll, they'll make a trip. They were, first thing they do is go run those traps. That's right. Mm -hmm. And even if it's during turkey, you know, during turkey well, you season, don't have they'll, to, they'll can, run them, set them yeah. out, and then you can go back and run them well, when they come the whole in, time you're there. They can throw their traps and leave them out. Just not leave them set. Mm -hmm. And when they roll into camp, they can right. set them traps back. Them and set them. Just yeah. bait them and set them and run them while they're in camp. And before they leave, just go step right. on them. Yeah, because you, know, you don't want to leave one of them. You know, yeah, I didn't mean that. But you've, yeah. got to, you've got to check the traps. But, you know, I mean, you think about why. Yeah, ethically, I, yeah. I want to I yeah. make sure yeah. we stress that. We're going to go out. You can go out and throw them. Then you need to. And, I, and, that, and that's what it comes down to. I, I mentioned a few times how meticulous you are and how – you right. you need some of that because you do need to go. Well, you set them out. People, you're committed. Go a lot of people them. don't realize you got to have trapping license. Yep, that's a good to point go too. Set this. That's okay. a good point too. Yeah, like so, a couple of years ago, there was yeah. look on Facebook. Everybody really jumped on the the trapping, and they were all them all them boys yep. on. They're trying to trying to be the new the new YouTube all star. They had the the tra picture of the of the trap under their feeder. That's right. And bragging about it, and didn't have no license. Nobody had no license. trapping license. Yeah, you got to have trapping <laughs> what, license what's, in what's the state of Alabama license? and Mississippi. In Alabama, they're twenty seven, twenty eight dollars somewhere. They've gone up. What's it in they Mississippi? Used to be eleven for for non resident it's close to five hundred. Wow. So my yeah, my trapping license in Mississippi, which I'm fixing to get them because I'm finna set in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be around five hundred dollars. Wow, uh, I hadn't I hadn't said any over there, but I bought my Alabama my resident trapping license, was, yeah. and that's the same way in like Georgia and. So it's reciprocal, probably. So if if I want so to get in Alabama, I'm probably looking at so yeah, when, you, when you're looking at Alabama, it's going to be probably four hundred dollars. Yeah. There's a sportsman's license covered. Uh -uh. No, so it's no, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a fur bear license. license. Yeah, and um. Yeah. Yeah, there's two. There's a trapping license and a fur bear. There, there's a there's a right. distinction well, in, in Mississippi. Mississippi in Mississippi, it may different. be. Yeah, but I know in Alabama it's all together. And I think I'm right. I, we may clarify in some in the show notes or. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, but if I'm I, wrong. I'm, I'll be able to tell you for sure because I'm fixing to get mine probably tomorrow. I just I've been waiting because it's date to date in Mississippi when you buy a license in Alabama it, it ends August 31st or yeah whatever it's September year, 1st is calendar year. But in Mississippi it's calendar year. So I'm trying to get. To right here to where I start, so yeah. maybe it just rotate again for next yeah. year. You know, well, but, um, I tell you, it's a I got a lot of land to trap in Mississippi, so I got to get them. Yeah. You know, well, so you picked up a lot of leases. in I Mississippi. picked up a lot of leases mm -hmm. in me, and then and them tracks I was telling you about with all the coon stuff on. Yeah. That's why they're still eating corn because I hadn't had trapping licenses. But you can't you can't get on a scale like like we are and not not be right. You know. Yeah. So well, you said oh yeah, you got to be right. right. That's right. Twenty dollars. Right. Come on now. I don't like uh, looking over my shoulder. No, just and just, be right. Just like my old buddy Mark McCluskey, my game warden, told me, he said, "Chris, I'm gonna tell you some easiest ticket to get is not having a no license." <laughs> he said, "That pays our." He said, "That pays our salary." Yeah, yeah. and just you know, get them twenty five bucks, get the license. I mean, that's the thing. It, it ain't worth getting yeah, a and two three hundred dollar ticket. The, what the resident trapping license is in Mississippi, I hadn't looked, but I know the out of state is. It's not expensive. It's, yeah. it's not prohibitively It's close to five hundred dollars. Now they right. may send you that survey. Like and they'll HIPAA, tell you, like you get that survey. you get that survey after trapping season. They'll tell you it's mandatory. Well, you got to fill this thing out, or you license. may not be able to get your trapping license next wow, year. They send that. you a survey cool. in the summer. Fill that yeah. sucker out because yeah. yeah. they can block you from getting your license the next year if you don't. Hmm. I bought my uh, non-resident hunting license in Mississippi, and I, they come in the mail today. I bought them before season come in, but for some reason or another, they come in the mail day, and I was looking on that thing, and it was five hundred and forty-four dollars. That's what my non-resident Mississippi license cost me. You get, five, you get your money's worth. Five hundred and forty-four dollars. <laughs> and look, I ain't killed a deer in Mississippi yet. So. <laughs> well, um, we appreciate that money. Well, ain't no doubt. Yeah, oh yeah, I know. I'm looking at them right here because right? they they pretty and orange. But I got mine the other day too. Five hundred forty-four dollars non-resident hmm. hunt license. My, I believed you. <laughs> no, well, I just I wanted everybody to know that's a little high. They got to get that down a little bit. I mean, I don't. Well, I know that goes to paying bills and stuff, but 
Yeah. I mean, are they trying to just keep people from coming? Well, to Mississippi, Mississippi, and Mississippi and Alabama's got the craziest relationship when it comes to hunting. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, we we, we, we took, hunt we all over the country. From Alabama, from Alabama, we hunt Alabama, all over yeah, the country. Yeah, these border counties, and that's the thing. It's we wild. all we, we, we live Square, in a border man. county. My in wife runs the state line and back. I would you know. love to know what got us to that point because, Hunter, you know, I've hunted with you in New York, Kansas, Texas, Florida. You know, we don't never pay that. I mean, to, to well, you're not buying state. a full no, game. You're not what, buying a full what, season license. license right. You're buying I mean, a still, ten day or something. But even a, even a two week license, and boys that come down, I mean, they were big time oh, money. Two hundred dollars. When they come up here, it's four or five hundred. You got to get in that mic. Look, he's gonna get mad and lay back yeah, away from the mic. He thinking about it. like a five hundred dollar license, Hunter. I mean, I just don't understand it. I don't understand why they they charge you so much for that. And now I'll have a thousand dollars just to hunt and trap Mississippi this year. Oh, Brent, all the. You're my tech man. Can we set him up one of the things on Facebook? What's it? <laughs> the GoFundMe go go me deal. I mean, that's he's, what I need. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Look, I, don't, I don't think that's going. No, I don't think that's no, it ain't going to calm me down. I, I'm gonna pay it, but it's, but it's, but it's, but it's investment. It needs to be talked about yeah. a little more. Maybe we will get to the right person. They keep people yeah, yeah. off his public land. Well, you know, and look along those lines, so we can spin, we can spin your frustration to something maybe productive. It would be nice, and I've heard a few whispers about it. Possibly, if you could get, if you could get some type of cost share for managing habitat, maybe you know, for, for wildlife improvement, but maybe yeah. specifically for turkeys. If the turkey numbers, that might be a different you know podcast. What? Get somebody yeah. on here. Yeah, but if you well, could, a, call, for a cost share program mm-hmm. for for brooding and nesting habitat, predator control, like to me. That's to me, that would be a really, really good thing, Chuck Younger, if you're out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. There you go. But, you know, it, it's uh-huh. – uh, um, and, and they're doing a lot more stuff. They, you know, this equip and some different things. Yeah. CPS. But, yeah. But – Anyway, you know, look, we, we wanted 100 we – first and foremost, you, yeah. you know, what we're all about is, is, is in the name, that woodsman perspective. None of us are – none of us proclaim to be experts, but we've done this for a long time. And the things well, we we're telling day. you, we, yeah. we live it, we've done yeah. it, and, and, and we're a lot like y'all. I mean, we, we, we grew up doing this, you know, and there's something about being a woodsman, and, and I don't know if there's a better example of that than you. And uh, well, what well, you've done through trapping, and, and, and you love turkeys, and so the things you're doing is, is to improve that habitat for turkeys, and it's, it works. That's right. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, it's, 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 no it's working. Yeah, I mean, I, I've that's, witnessed it. You that's know, the only firsthand. common denominator yeah. in and what we do, and 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 we kill turkeys on our club. Look, Ain't you, no you know question. That? I, no, I, we got, look, we when got you, a group when you, of guys. When you as good at killing them as you are, you you got to get good at making them. No, or you're gonna have I, a problem just, for I'm long. I'm just saying that we got a group of guys in that our club. They are killers. Yeah. We got a turkey laying on that porch. Somebody taking a picture of it. More than not. Well, you know, I tell and, people all the time, it's man, you don't want a cream in your club. I mean, not saying nothing bad. I'm just saying, well, how else are you going to take that? Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to fuss about the license fee and they're going to kill all your turkeys. Yeah. You don't know how many clubs I've been refused. Just because of I know, that. that I know exactly thing. what you're talking yeah. about. I've been, been, I've been blackballed too. from You get clubs, a reputation huh? of killing turkeys. 100%. Boy, you, you, out on, you out on getting well, it anywhere. Well, it, hey, if, if, people there, knew, yeah. if people knew how many you saved, that's right. It ain't a, it ain't they don't realize what the work we do to keep it. It ain't a prick of. How many he kills versus how many saves? That's right. I mean, what, really. What I was getting at is, we kill them. We got a group of people that that kill turkeys, but we got them. We still got them because we manage them. Manage them. We yeah. we don't consistently we don't kill yeah. them. You all. don't stop. You don't take we don't off. Kill you them do all. It. We we stay trapping. We do stuff that you know yeah. to keep them. Yep. And and, and so most on. people now, I would go out and say what you just said, and I said it earlier. Most people, that's the two things that you can control. Yeah, is no you can question. control. Yeah. The predators. That's you. That's how many turkeys you take with that trigger finger, and and the, the no nest question. and and the and those brood yeah. predators, coyotes, bobcats, no skunks, yeah. raccoons. Well, and it's fun. Well, yeah, and I get asked to go different places all through turkeys eating. Chris tell you, I'm like, let's just go over here in the morning because I know I got turkeys gobbling over here, and I don't right. know what you got. You know, I don't want right. to waste the morning. Well, I already know he's gonna shoot, so I I try to. Go to a place. I ain't that, shot you. Yeah, me and Chris haven't been hunting. With no, I did. I shot one time. Shot. I got to take yeah, it back. Yeah, you took it back. But, you know, it, it's a um, – it just taking care of them 
you yep. got to you got to give back to them. Yeah, I mean, they got if you're gonna take them, you need to be making them. They got That's everything. Right. They got everything working against them, Brent. And and uh, and here's another thing, guys. And I know, look, I've probably done my share of shooting too many of them, Uh-oh. but I did it on other places. Here we go. And I did it on other people's places, so that that don't hurt as other bad. Other states, yeah. yeah that's right. No, I didn't do that. Now I don't get no Lacey Act against me, but it shouldn't. It'll get where it don't bother you to leave some. That's right. Yeah, don't, and that's and, part and, of that and, evolution. That's look, part you got of evolution. Two, you got two two year old. But got, there was a time that it bothered I know, you to death. But now. they got two look, two year olds coming in. Don't shoot both of them. No, shoot one. I mean, it, you got to leave some. You you I know, mean, look, and that's hey, it. Yeah, right that, now, that's part of that. Let me ask you this. You don't think those people in Kansas, those outfitters in Kansas, right. are not thinking, hey, I wish we wouldn't have shot too many. That's right, yeah. Because whatever's happening out there, and I can't well, it was in put, Kansas last year. I can't pinpoint. That place full of turkeys, but now it ain't. I don't know what's that's going right. on. That's right. And y'all been out there 26 years. Yeah. We've been, well, we've been out there, and, all in, and that's in New York, but in yeah. Kansas, we've been out there about 12, 13. New York was down. New York was down. Because Every, I went up there with that you. we went out of town yeah. this year was was. Was down. And, was and you're hunting pumping. all over the country. I was pumping Chris up, dude. There's turkeys gobbling everywhere. You'll yeah. see more turkeys you've ever seen in your life riding around. They're just strutting everywhere. This year, it wasn't that way. No, I had to Man. go to the A&P <laughs> store and get some sliced turkey. I mean, that's about how bad it got. No, this it was pretty was, good. We, but We can have another podcast yeah. on turkeys, but I look, you won't convince me that a lot of it isn't <laughs> them trigger fingers. There's so many more people well, shooting them. Well, it, it just if, if they have a little bit of a wobble, yeah, a if, flood. Yeah, if you kill every now, look, flood. we're gonna go straight I mean, into another you. another topic. But if you kill every goblin turkey on your place, then you're one bad hatch away from disaster. That's I'm right. telling and you, people I, think, I, well, you know, I got another generation look, coming up. I got another generation coming up. We can't control. You may not spring flooding. No. Uh-uh. Okay. No, we can't control a lot that. Of bottom land, but bottom now we tracks. can control predators. We control okay? predators. And so we that's the two how many things. You shoot. And how many you shoot? That's the three factors. Think yeah. about it. We can say habitat all day, but if you got turkeys and you, and, and you haven't changed the habitat, they're they're going to be there. Mm. Okay, should be. But if they if you got spring flood, gets a nest. You don't take care of the predators, which a lot of people are not. Look, deer season's over with. They're going to put everything up. It's time for baseball. It's time move for on. move on. Yeah. Fishing time, river time. They're not thinking about it. You got to think about it all year. You got to think about it all year. And as soon as I mean, turkey season comes in, you'll have people just like in deer season. You don't see them when you out there planting them green fields and doing all this. You know nobody's over here eating breakfast. But <laughs> you come deer season, or we'll come yeah, eat any time. Yeah. Look, it's, they lined out the driveway out there yeah. to you know to eat breakfast with you. And, and that's the thing. That, it's the reward the and reward. the goal. Yeah. Well, all right. The so thing. in fairness, that goes back to not everybody is as eat up with it as we are, and not everybody has the time. Some people don't care about them. But that person should still. Get a hunter. Get somebody. Get a hunter. Cream hat. Let right. somebody come in and do it. Just because you don't have the time to do it, you can still get it done. And I go back to Doctor Reed. I've been around him for ten or fifteen years. I've never seen him with a turkey outfit on, but he kills over a hundred turkeys a year. Hmm. He I mean, hundred. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 we kid on out. No, no, Chris. No, hundred coons a year. Okay. <laughs> Doc, I'm sorry. I wasn't gonna get let you. that one slide. <laughs> no affidavit signed against no. you. I was kicking but, him in the knee. But he kills, a hundred, <laughs> he kills 100 predators a year, and he don't turkey hunt. Yeah. But he does it because it's the right thing That's to right. do. Yep. You know, he stopped me in the road down that day. And yeah. He talked for a while. Well, about, I told him about them coyotes, and That's he right. was fired up by He wanted to know all about Doc, it and what traps Doc's smart now. Doc, he rereads, he studies, he does everything. But it, it's a thing where he don't have to he don't have to trap those coons. That's right. But he yeah, does, does because it, it makes his place it's stewardship, better. It's conservation, it's balance, he, it's taking care of the land. He told me. Leave it better than you found it. He, he, he just said, Chris, you got to do it. He said, I you love need, that. He pointed around me and said, you need to be doing it on your place. That's so, good. And after he told me that, you I can did ar- You can argue with somebody to you black and blue, and everybody's got their own opinions about what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. But I'm telling you, trapping works. Yeah, and I'll say Trapping that, is yep. effective, and yep. I'll we'll fight to and, the – I, yeah, rule rule reverse is just say you are a trigger happy person, trap more. Yeah, then you'll have more right. turkeys. Yeah. Right. And look, you you kind of hit on it. I think where you were going, you 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 were, you were being serious about saying it works because some of the data and some of the research may push back a little bit again. You know, we're yeah, only going to do yeah. so good. You got compensatory mortality. You got compensatory reproduction. There if you again. hit them hard, they're going to increase the breeding, and and that may be true. 
I won't argue the facts. I'm not smart enough to argue with the scientists about it. But we know you've seen it. I've seen it. With it, boots it on the works. ground, on eyeballs. And again, even the even the scientists that say all those things I just said, that you know, the the, the benefit is limited. There's none of them are telling you not to do it. They're well, still saying, you know, when, when they it's, was, it's when they effective. Were, it's a good piece of that management. You, you need to be doing it. Well, if if anybody that's got chickens, your cousin, yeah, told me they, yesterday, they chickens right down here, chickens. Night four last, killed ten of them. He put a trap out, boom, two coons. Yeah, two coons, killed ten of his chickens. Okay, you know we were talking yeah. about a full grown chicken. What do you think they can do to a poult that the first two weeks of its life, it's got to sit on the ground mm -hmm. and be real quiet and hide? You know, I, <laughs> I mean, like look, the vision. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're talking about beep, turkeys. You ought to see the quail <clears throat> population around here. You, when you bush hogging in the fall, them. we got them. Y'all got them. I mean, That's I don't know cool, how you so hunt them in this pine thicket, yeah. but we got quail yeah. everywhere. You get up, cubbies here. Well, quail are pretty sharp first two to three years after a, a clear cut. Yeah. Bush well, hog in this really fall, i seen yeah. two or three coveries a day. That's, 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 that's amazing. That's, that's good. Cool. I don't know enough about them, but, you know, I know people that's got full-grown ducks, mallards. Uh, one of them named Waylon and Willie. Yeah. Okay? Couldn't kill both of them. Reached in the cage, snatched her, snatched her heads off. He's full-grown. So what I'm saying is, they can get them yeah. from big to little. Not they just got to have the yeah. opportunity. The yeah, opportunities. That's right. You know, and and you take you take that hen with those babies. She done sat on that thing, protected them, hatched them out, hit them. They may be a Chris I mean, and a bunch of them wanders around, never bumps into one. But there's a lot, there's a lot more other people out there that's going that's going to find them. You know, yeah. find yep. a nest. Yeah. So you 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 may have one dummy, but the, all of them ain't dummies. They ain't all no, that's right. Well, look, that's a lot of good information. That uh, is. That's good. Been a good I think podcast. I, let's, we're gonna have Hunter back on because look, a couple of things happened. I got over here and they were, they were grilling. We set the cameras up. We got a good comfortable spot. Thing about uh, Chris, you gonna eat? Had good food. So we will have to come back and do this and talk. I want to get in on one of them, one of them meals, one of them turkey season meals over here. We may have to have them a fried uh, nuggets, a dinner uh -huh. or a breakfast. Yeah, that'd be good. That that breakfast fried, is killer now. His that, daddy cooked that tenderloin. It's that prairie meat tenderloin. You throw yeah. it on a grill. I mean, throw it in that frying pan you. over there and some eggs. Such good product at a, such a cheap price. Yeah. <laughs> full full <laughs> service process. Yeah. Prairie meat. <laughs> Where your bag is full and the price is cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we got, what, a week, almost a week left of season. Mm -hmm. uh, we just came out. Of, we had No ducks. We had, look. We had one cold spell came through and everything froze, and then when it, as soon as it melted, we got four or five inches of rain this week. Yeah. So we can't get a, a break with the weather. Uh, but uh, as soon as it gets out of here, though, I'm fishing to get some get on, on the ground. Yep. I need to kill one or two more does, Chris. We're gonna do it. Me too. Next week, All right, we may have a doe killing episode. Let's have a maybe we what we do. We meet up at Chris's camp, have a mm -hmm. doe a doe killing podcast and and cooking. That's awesome. Sounds right. good. Look, thank y'all. This one will be up on YouTube and in all the normal spots. And uh, we hope you don't mind seeing us too much. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all having me on. Right, Appreciate dude. you coming. Thanks for coming on. Y'all have a good one. Bye.